John Thavis spent 30 years as an independent journalist covering the Vatican. And he's out with a brand new book that just, by happenstance, coincides with the retirement for the first time in uh, 600 years, the Pope. The book is called The Vatican Diaries, a behind-the-scenes look at the power, the personalities, and the politics at the heart of the Catholic Church. Don, John Thavis, our guest. John, let's talk about the future of the Church. A lot of, a lot of uh, non-Catholics don't understand why priests can't get married, don't understand lots of things about the Catholic Church. Do you see the Catholic Church making any giant changes in the next few years? Well, on some things, the Church certainly can make changes. For example, priests getting married. Uh, there are calls from time to time from bishops and even cardinals uh, asking that this priestly celibacy, priestly celibacy rule be reviewed. And the reason they can do that legitimately is because the idea of married priests is not uh, a doctrinal issue. It's, it's an issue of tradition. And... In fact, there are married priests in the Catholic Church. They're in the Church's Eastern Rites, and uh, there are some priests who came over from the Anglicans who are also married. So exceptions have been made, and there's no doctrinal reason why it couldn't be changed. We may see some movement on that. Uh, it depends on you know what direction a new pope may want to open the conversation toward. Uh, pope Benedict was not really open to changing the priestly celibacy rule. And so we didn't see any movement on that at all. On issues like women's ordination, I don't think you're going to see a change uh, for a very, very long time, if ever, because basically that has been defined as somewhat infallible by Pope John Paul II. And so we really, uh, th that's kind of the third rail issue for people to touch over here. Yeah. When they walk into the Sistine Chapel and they close the door to vote, how does it work? Do people stand up and give speeches? Are there, are there you know, little, little coffee clatches? I mean, how, how, how do they go about electing the next pope? By the time they get into the Sistine Chapel, the speech giving is pretty much over. Uh, I, I think they're, they're given a little spiritual talk by one of the preachers, but the speech giving and conversation part of the conclave actually occurs before they go into the voting. Now that's going to begin probably early next week, and it may last a week or even two weeks. Uh, some people say we need a longer time to get to know some of the new faces in the College of Cardinals. And in those conversations, we will have certainly people enunciating their vision of the church, what they think the church's priorities should be. And in private conversations, they're going to talk about who would make a good pope. It's not campaigning in the political sense. It's a much more subtle thing. If someone were to actually campaign for pope, uh, they would face a certain backlash. Do, 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 do they... When, when, when we read that, you know, maybe there's going to somebody from Latin America, maybe there's somebody from Africa, may, do, do they buy into that? Do they hear that? Is, 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 in other words, are we hearing that from them, or are they hearing that from us? That's a very good question. Up until now, they've been hearing that from us. These cardinals read the newspapers. I remember in 2005, I was talking to a cardinal after the conclave, and I said, well, when did you come around to see Cardinal Ratzinger as the front runner, and he said, well, I was reading the newspaper before the conclave began. So, you know, these cardinals are not living in a vacuum. They are certainly paying attention to what journalists have to say at this point. Maybe that's a dangerous thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Dolan, the Cardinal of New York, is from St. Louis. People say that if America were to ever have a pope, he would be the guy. How come there won't be a pope from America? You know, uh, maybe eight years ago I would have gone along with that question, but this time I'm going to say, mm, don't rule that out, okay? It used to be a taboo subject. Right. America can't run the world and run the church. Well, now I, I think people recognize that cardinals they're American citizens, perhaps, but they don't have a, a, a super allegiance to American political interests, and they certainly wouldn't. They wouldn't be carrying that forward if they were elected pope. Uh, I think geographical loyalties and allegiances matter less than they used to, and therefore the idea of an American coming in is not so unthinkable as it used to be.
So you you really think? I mean, is Dolan still a long shot? He's an outsider, but again, there's no front runner, and you know, you you do hear his name along with Cardinal Sean O'Malley's name from Boston. And I think they're considered legitimate contenders for the papacy at this point, even though Cardinal Dolan has only been a cardinal for about a year. Right. Where does the church go? Look in your crystal ball, John Thavis, the author of the book, The, the Vatican Diaries. Uh, a crystal ball, are they going to go young? Are they going to go old? Are they going to go radical? And or are they going to go more conservative? Well, there won't be any radical uh, changes because, after all, these cardinals were all appointed by either Pope Benedict or Pope John Paul II. So I don't think any of them are going to turn in any radical new directions for the Church. I do think that cardinals may look to a younger candidate because they know that resignation is always an option on the table. And, you know, a pope doesn't have to resign at age 85 like Benedict. He can resign perhaps at age 75. In other words, they can look at a younger pool of candidates. I think, too, and I hope as a Catholic that the cardinals, when they come together, will take a good look at the office of the papacy and catch the spirit of what Pope Benedict has done and perhaps make some changes or encourage a new pope to make some changes, especially when it comes to the Vatican bureaucracy. I think that probably a new pope not only has to manage the Vatican uh, in a more hands-on fashion, but the way is really open for him to make drastic changes. For example, internationalize the Roman Curia once and for all. Uh, you know, he may look at, at the need to have better communication strategies inside the Vatican. You know, he could look and say, do we really need a Vatican bank? It seems to be causing us nothing but headaches. Uh, some fresh thinking, I think, is called for at this point. John Thavis, the book is called The Vatican Diaries, a behind-the-scenes look at the power, the personalities, and the politics at the heart of the Catholic Church. John Thavis, thank you for your insights. Good luck with the book. Thank you. You're very welcome. You got it. The Vatican Diaries, bookstores, nooks, everywhere out there where you can find a book, The Vatican Diaries. Ten, uh, back in a moment, the Big 550 KTRS.